Xenophobia. Xenophobia is the fear and distrust of that which is perceived to be foreign or strange. Xenophobia can involve perceptions of an in-group towards an out-group and can manifest itself in suspicion of the activities of others, and a desire to eliminate their presence to secure a presumed purity and may relate to a fear of losing national, ethnic or racial identity. Xenophobia is a political term and not a recognized medical phobia. Xenophobia can also be exhibited in the form of an uncritical exaltation of another culture in which a culture is ascribed an unreal, stereotyped and exotic quality. The terms xenophobia and racism are sometimes confused and used interchangeably because people who share a national origin may also belong to the same race. Due to this, xenophobia is usually distinguished by opposition to foreign culture. Dictionary definitions of xenophobia include, deep-rooted fear towards foreigners, and fear of the unfamiliar. The word comes from the ancient Greek words, xenuo micron sigma, meaning strange, foreigner, and phi beta omicron sigma, meaning fear. Dot. A scholarly definition of xenophobia, according to Andreas Swimmer, is an element of a political struggle about who has the right to be cared for by the state and society, a fight for the collective goods of the modern state. In other words, xenophobia arises when people feel that their rights to benefit from the government is being subverted by other people's rights. An early example of xenophobic sentiment in Western culture is the ancient Greek denigration of foreigners as barbarians, the belief that the Greek people and culture were superior to all others, and the subsequent conclusion that barbarians were naturally meant to be enslaved. Ancient Romans also held notions of superiority over all other peoples, such as in a speech attributed to Manius Acilius, there, as you know, there were Macedonians and Thracians and Illyrians, almost warlike nations, here Syrians and Asiatic Greeks, the most worthless peoples among mankind and born for slavery. Despite the majority of the country's population being of mixed, African, or indigenous heritage, depictions of non-European Brazilians on the programming of most national television networks is scarce and typically relegated for musicians slash their shows. Dot in the case of telenovelas, Brazilians of darker skin tone are typically depicted as housekeepers or in positions of lower socio-economic standing. Muslim and Sikh Canadians have faced racism and discrimination within recent years, especially after 2001, and the spillover effect of the United States' war on terror. A 2016 survey from the Environics Institute, which was a follow-up to a study conducted 10 years prior that there may be discriminating attitudes that may be a residual of the effects of the September 11, 2001 attacks in the United States. When it comes to opinions on both Sikhs and Muslims, a poll done by McLean's revealed that only 28% of Canadians view Islam favorably, and only 30% viewed the Sikh religion favorably. 45% of respondents believed Islam encourages violence. In Quebec in particular, only 17% of respondents had a favorable view of Muslims. There has been racial tension between the Indo-Guyanese people and the Afro-Guyanese. Racism in Mexico has a long history. Historically, Mexicans with light skin tones had absolute control over dark-skinned Amerindians due to the structure of the Spanish colonial caste system. When a Mexican of a darker skin tone marries one of a lighter skin tone, it is common for them say that they are making the race better. This can be interpreted as a self-attack on their ethnicity. Despite improving economic and social conditions of indigenous Mexicans, discrimination against indigenous Mexicans continues to this day and there are few laws to protect indigenous Mexicans from discrimination. Violent attacks against indigenous Mexicans are moderately common and many times go unpunished. When the Venezuelan War of Independence started, the Spanish enlisted the Aneros, playing on their dislike of the Criollos of the independence movement. Jose Tomas Bov led an army of Aneros which routinely killed white Venezuelans. After several more years of war, which killed half of Venezuela's white population, the country achieved independence from Spain in 1821. In Venezuela, like other South American countries, economic inequality often breaks along ethnic and racial lines. A 2013 Swedish academic study stated that Venezuela was the most racist country in the Americas, followed by the Dominican Republic. 
Concern over Japanese ethnic and immigrant groups during the Second World War prompted the Canadian and U.S. governments to intern most of their ethnically Japanese populations in the western portions of North America. As in most countries, many people in the U.S. continue to be xenophobic against other races. In the view of a network of scores of U.S. civil rights and human rights organizations, discrimination permeates all aspects of life in the United States, and extends to all communities of color. Discrimination against racial, ethnic, and religious minorities, especially when it comes to African Americans, is widely acknowledged. Members of every major American ethnic and religious minority have perceived discrimination in their dealings with other minority racial and religious groups. Philosopher Cornel West has stated that racism is an integral element within the very fabric of American culture and society. It is embedded in the country's first collective definition, enunciated in its subsequent laws, and imbued in its dominant way of life. After Donald Trump took presidential office in 2017, he repeatedly attempted to enact a travel ban on originally seven countries which were listed as countries of concern by Secretary of Homeland Security Jay Johnson under the Obama administration in 2011. This was later changed to six in a revision that removed Iraq in part due to criticism that the original order overlooked the country's role in fighting Islamic terrorism and barred entry even to the Iraqi interpreters who had been embedded with U.S. forces in the region. Kiza Khan, the father of United States Army Captain Humun Khan, described it in a CNN interview as a continuation of what he called Trump's xenophobic rhetoric and the order was described as xenophobic by Amnesty International. The policy was also criticized for targeting exclusively Muslim-majority countries. In defense of this order, Trump's press secretary Sean Spicer cited these existing restrictions as evidence that the executive order was based on outstanding policies saying that the seven targeted countries were said to be countries of particular concern by the Obama administration. President Trump stated his policy was similar to an order in 2011 signed by Barack Obama that banned visa for refugees from Iraq where the number of refugees from Iraq dropped from 18,000 to 9,000 as a result of the suspension. Though others saw the connection between these two policies as tenuous at best. In 2011, additional background checks were imposed on the nationals of Iraq. Foreigners who were nationals of those countries, or who had visited those countries since 2011, were required to obtain a visa to enter the United States even if they were nationals or dual nationals of the 38 countries participating in the visa waiver program. Not a few months after the original travel ban a revised ban was signed and Iraq was removed from the list of countries in part due to criticism that the original order overlooked the country's role in fighting Islamic terrorism and barred entry even to the Iraqi interpreters who had been embedded with U.S. forces in the region. In 1991-92, Bhutan is said to have deported between 10,000 and 100,000 ethnic Nepalis. The actual number of refugees that were initially deported is debated by both sides. In March 2008, this population began a multi-year resettlement to third countries including the US, Canada, New Zealand, Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands and Australia. At present, the United States is working towards resettling more than 60,000 of these refugees in the U.S. as third country settlement program. Brunei law provides positive discrimination in favor of ethnic Malay. A number of discriminatory laws against Chinese Indonesians were enacted by the government of Indonesia. In 1959, President Sukarno approved pages 10-1959 that forced Chinese Indonesians to close their businesses in rural areas and relocate into urban areas. Moreover, political pressures in the 1970s and 1980s restricted the role of the Chinese Indonesian in politics, academics, and the military. As a result, they were thereafter constrained professionally to becoming entrepreneurs and professional managers in trade, manufacturing, and banking. In 1998, Indonesia riots over higher food prices and rumors of hoarding by merchants and shopkeepers often degenerated into anti-Chinese attacks. In 2014, the state of Penang held a referendum that bans foreigners from cooking local cuisines. A well-known local chef, Chef Wan, criticized this law. In 2005, a United Nations report expressed concerns about racism in Japan and that government recognition of the depth of the problem was not total. The author of the report, Dudu Dine, 
concluded after a nine-day investigation that racial discrimination and xenophobia in Japan primarily affects three groups, national minorities, Latin Americans of Japanese descent, mainly Japanese Brazilians, and foreigners from poor countries. Japan accepted just 16 refugees in 1999, while the United States took in 85,010 for resettlement, according to the UNHCR. New Zealand, which is 30 times smaller than Japan, accepted 1,140 refugees in 1999. Just 305 persons were recognized as refugees by Japan from 1981, when Japan ratified the UN Convention relating to the status of refugees, to 2002. Former Prime Minister Taro Aso called Japan a one-race nation. Xenophobia in South Korea has been recognized by scholars in the United Nations as a widespread social problem. An increase in immigration to South Korea since the 2000s catalyzed more overt expressions of racism, as well as criticism of those expressions. Newspapers have frequently reported on and criticized discrimination against immigrants, in forms such as being paid lower than the minimum wage, having their wages withheld, unsafe work conditions, physical abuse, or general denigration. In a 2010-2014 World Values Survey, 44.2% of South Koreans reported they would not want a foreigner as a neighbor. Racist attitudes are more commonly expressed towards immigrants from other Asian countries and Africa, and less so towards European and white North American immigrants who can occasionally receive what has been described as overly kind treatment. Related discrimination have also been reported with regards to mixed-race children, Chinese-Korean, and North Korean immigrants. As in much of Asia, dark skin is equated with outdoor labor conditions in the lower classes, but, contrary to the view in Western countries, it is not connected to slavery. Thai culture shares this type of skin toned bias as the rest of Asia. Although Thailand has incorporated certain Western ideals concerning beauty, Asian attitudes regarding skin tones have been around for a long time. The 20 million Isan population for instance, many of whom are of Laotian and Khmer descent, traditionally had darker skin and studies show that many view themselves as less desirable than those with lighter skin. Skin whitening products have proven increasingly popular in most of Asia, including Thailand and are marketed in such a way as to promote light skin as beautiful and desirable. In 2008 a Pew Research Center survey found that negative views concerning Jews were most common in the three predominantly Arab nations polled, with 97% of Lebanese having unfavorable opinion of Jews, 95% in Egypt and 96% in Jordan. Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood leader Mohammed Mahdi Akfus denounced what he called the myth of the Holocaust in defending Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's denial of it. In an article in October 2000 columnist Adel Hamada alleged in the state-owned Egyptian newspaper Al-Aram that Jews made matzah from the blood of children. Mohamed Salmaway, editor of Al-Aram Ebdo, defended the use of old European myths like the blood libel in his newspapers. Jordan does not allow entry to Jews with visible signs of Judaism or even with personal religious items in their possession. The Jordanian ambassador to Israel replied to a complaint by a religious Jew denied entry that security concerns required that travelers entering the Hashemite kingdom not do so with prayer shawls and phylacteries. Jordanian authorities state that the policy is in order to ensure the Jewish tourist safety. In July 2009, Tzikspress Lev Hasidim were deported after attempting entry into Jordan in order to visit the tomb of Aaron, Sheikh Harun on Mount Hor, near Petra because of an alert from the Ministry of Tourism. The group had taken a ferry from Sinai, Egypt because they understood that Jordanian authorities were making it hard for visible Jews to enter from Israel. The Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs is aware of the issue. According to the 2004 U.S. State Department country reports on human rights practices for Israel and the occupied territories, the Israeli government had done little to reduce institutional, legal, and societal discrimination against the country's Arab citizens. The 2005 U.S. Department of State report on Israel wrote, the government generally respected the human rights of its citizens, however, there were problems in some areas, including institutional, legal, 
and societal discrimination against the country's Arab citizens. The 2010 U.S. State Department country report stated that Israeli law prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, and that government effectively enforced these prohibitions. Former Likud MK and Minister of Defense Moshe Aarons has criticized the treatment of minorities in Israel, saying that they did not bear the full obligation of Israeli citizenship, nor were they extended the full privileges of citizenship. The Association for Civil Rights in Israel published reports documenting racism in Israel, and the 2007 report suggested that anti-Arab racism in the country was increasing. One analysis of the report summarized it thus, over two-thirds Israeli teens believe Arabs to be less intelligent, uncultured and violent. The Israeli government spokesman responded that the Israeli government was committed to fighting racism whenever it raises its ugly head and is committed to full equality to all Israeli citizens, irrespective of ethnicity, creed or background, as defined by our Declaration of Independence. I. C. Liebler of the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs argues that Israeli Jews are troubled by increasingly hostile, even treasonable outbursts by Israeli Arabs against the state while it is at war with neighboring countries. Hezbollah's Alman TV channel has often been accused of airing anti-Semitic broadcasts, blaming the Jews for a Zionist conspiracy against the Arab world, and often airing excerpts from the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which the Encyclopedia Britannica describes as a fraudulent document that served as a pretext and rationale for anti-Semitism in the early 20th century. In another incident, an Almanar commentator recently referred to Zionist attempts to transmit aids to Arab countries. Almanar officials deny broadcasting anti-Semitic incitement and state that their position is anti-Israeli, not anti-Semitic. However, Hezbollah has directed strong rhetoric both against Israel and Jews, and it has cooperated in publishing and distributing outright anti-Semitic literature. The government of Lebanon has not criticized continued broadcast of anti-Semitic material on television. Various Palestinian organizations and individuals have been regularly accused of being anti-Semitic. Howard Gutman believes that much of Muslim hatred of Jews stems from the ongoing Arab-Israeli conflict and that peace would significantly reduce anti-Semitism. In August, 2003, senior Hamas official Dr. Abd Al-Aziz Al-Rantisi wrote in the Hamas newspaper al Razala. It is no longer a secret that the Zionists were behind the Nazis' murder of many Jews, and agreed to it, with the aim of intimidating them and forcing them to immigrate to Palestine. In August 2009, Hamas refused to allow Palestinian children to learn about the Holocaust, which it called a lie invented by the Zionists and referred to Holocaust education as a war crime. Racism in Saudi Arabia against labor workers who are foreigners, mostly from developing countries. Asians' maids have been persecuted victims of racism and discrimination in the country, foreign workers have been raped, exploited, and are all unpaid, physically abused, overworked and locked in their places of employment. The international organization Human Rights Watch describes these conditions as near slavery and attributes them to deeply rooted gender, religious, and racial discrimination. In many cases the workers are unwilling to report their employers for fear of losing their jobs or further abuse. There were several cases of anti-Semitism in Saudi Arabia and is common within religious circles. Saudi Arabian media often attacks Jews in books, news articles, at their mosques and with what some describe as anti-Semitic satire. Saudi Arabian government officials and states religious leaders often promote the idea that Jews are conspiring to take over the entire world. As proof of their claims they publish and frequently cite the protocols of the elders of Zion as factual. A study that ran from 2002 to 2015 into social attitudes by Harvard University has mapped the countries in Europe with the highest incidence of racial bias, based on data from 288,076 white Europeans. It used the implicit association test. The strongest racial bias was found in several Eastern European countries, as well as Malta, Italy, and Portugal. A 2017 report by the University of Oslo Center for Research on Extremism tentatively suggests that individuals of Muslim background stand out among perpetrators of anti-Semitic violence in Western Europe. They were recorded well over a hundred anti-Semitic attacks in Belgium in 2009. This was a 100% increase from the year before. The perpetrators were usually young males of immigrant background from the Middle East.
In 2009, the Belgian city of Antwerp, often referred to as Europe's last Stettel, experienced a surge in anti-Semitic violence. Bloe Miva Zemden, an Amsterdam resident and Auschwitz survivor, was quoted in the newspaper Often Posten in 2010, the anti-Semitism now is even worse than before the Holocaust. The anti-Semitism has become more violent. Now they are threatening to kill us. In 2004, France experienced rising levels of Islamic anti-Semitism and acts that were publicized around the world. In 2006, rising levels of anti-Semitism were recorded in French schools. Reports related to the tensions between the children of North African Muslim immigrants and North African Jewish children. The climax was reached when Ilan Halimi was tortured to death by the so-called Barbarians Gang, led by Yusuf Fofana. In 2007, over 7,000 members of the community petitioned for asylum in the United States, citing anti-Semitism in France. In the first half of 2009, an estimated 631 recorded acts of anti-Semitism took place in France, more than the whole of 2008. Speaking to the World Jewish Congress in December 2009, the French interior minister Hotefu described the acts of anti-Semitism as a poison to our republic. He also announced that he would appoint a special coordinator for fighting racism and anti-Semitism. The period after losing World War I led to an increased use of anti-Semitism and other racism in political discourse, for example among the right-wing Frey Corps, emotions that finally culminated in the ascent of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party in 1933. The Nazi racial policy and the Nuremberg race laws against Jews and other non-Aryans represented the most explicit racist policies in Europe in the 20th century. These laws deprived all Jews including even half-Jews and quarter-Jews as well as other non-Aryans from German citizenship. Jews' official title became subject of the state. The Nuremberg race laws forbid racially mixed sexual relations and marriage between Aryans and at first Jews but was later extended to Gypsies, Negroes or their bastard offspring. Such interracial relations became a criminal and punishable offense under the race laws known as racial pollution Rassenschand. According to a 2012 survey, 18% of the Turks in Germany believe Jews are inferior human beings. As in other European countries, the Romani people face disadvantages, including unequal treatment, discrimination, segregation and harassment. Negative stereotypes are often linked to Romani unemployment and reliance on state benefits. In 2008 and 2009 nine attacks took place against Romani in Hungary, resulting in six deaths and multiple injuries. According to the Hungarian Curia, these murders were motivated by anti-Romani sentiment and sentenced the perpetrators to life imprisonment. Anti-Roma sentiment exists in Italy and takes the form of hostility, prejudice, discrimination or racism directed at Romani people. There's no reliable data for the total number of Roma people living in Italy, but estimates put it between 140,000 and 170,000. Many national and local political leaders engaged in rhetoric during 2007 and 2008 that maintained that the extraordinary rise in crime at the time was mainly a result of uncontrolled immigration of people of Roma origin from recent European Union member states Romania. National and local leaders declared their plans to expel Roma from settlements in and around major cities and to deport illegal immigrants. The mayors of Rome and Milan signed security pacts in May 2007 that envisaged the forced eviction of up to 10,000 Romani people. According to a May 2008 poll 68% of Italians wanted to see all of the country's approximately 150,000 gypsies, many of them Italian citizens, expelled. The survey, published as mobs in Naples burned down gypsy camps that month, revealed that the majority also wanted all gypsy camps in Italy to be demolished. In the early 2012 the Dutch right-wing Party for Freedom established an anti-Slavic and anti-Romani website, where native Dutch people could air their frustration about losing their job because of cheaper workers from Poland, Bulgaria, Romania and other non-Germanic Central and Eastern European countries. This led to commentaries involving hate speech and other racial prejudice mainly against Poles and Roma, but also aimed at other Central and Eastern European ethnic groups. In the Netherlands, anti-Semitic incidents, from verbal abuse to violence, are reported, allegedly connected with Islamic youth, mostly boys from Moroccan descent. 
a phrase made popular during football matches against the so-called Jewish football club Ajax has been adopted by Muslim youth and is frequently heard at pro-Palestinian demonstrations, Hamas, Hamas, Jews to the gas. According to the Center for Information and Documentation on Israel, a pro-Israel lobby group in the Netherlands, in 2009, the number of anti-Semitic incidents in Amsterdam, the city that is home to most of the approximately 40,000 Dutch Jews, was said to be doubled compared to 2008. In 2010, the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation after one year of research, revealed that anti-Semitism was common among Norwegian Muslims. Teachers at schools with large shares of Muslims revealed that Muslim students often praise or admire Adolf Hitler for his killing of Jews, that Jew hate is legitimate within vast groups of Muslim students, and Muslims laugh or command to stop when trying to educate about the Holocaust. Additionally that while some students might protest when some express support for terrorism, none object when students express hate of Jews and that it says in the Quran that you shall kill Jews, all true Muslims hate Jews. Most of these students were said to be born and raised in Norway. One Jewish father also told that his child after school had been taken by a Muslim mob, reportedly to be taken out to the forest and hanged because he was a Jew. By the beginning of the 20th century, most European Jews lived in the so-called Pale of Settlement, the western frontier of the Russian Empire consisting generally of the modern-day countries of Poland, Lithuania, Belarus and neighboring regions. Many pogroms accompanied the revolution of 1917 and the ensuing Russian Civil War. An estimated 70,000 to 250,000 civilian Jews were killed in the atrocities throughout the former Russian Empire. The number of Jewish orphans exceeded 300,000. In the 2000s, neo-Nazi groups inside Russia had risen to include as many as tens of thousands of people. Racism against both the Russian citizens and non-Russian citizens of Africans, Central Asians, East Asians and Europeans is a significant problem. A government study in 2006 estimated that 5% of the total adult population and 39% of adult Muslims harbor systematic anti-Semitic views. The former Prime Minister Yoran Person described these results as surprising and terrifying. However, the rabbi of Stockholm's Orthodox Jewish community, Meir Horden, said, It's not true to say that the Swedes are anti-Semitic. Some of them are hostile to Israel because they support the weak side, which they perceive the Palestinians to be. In March 2010, Frederick Siadsk told Die Press, an Austrian internet publication, that Jews are being harassed and physically attacked by people from the Middle East. Although he added that only a small number of Malmö's 40,000 Muslims exhibit hatred of Jews. Siedsk also stated that approximately 30 Jewish families have emigrated from Malmö to Israel in the past year, specifically to escape from harassment. Also in March, the Swedish newspaper Skånska Dagbladet reported that attacks on Jews in Malmö totaled 79 in 2009, about twice as many as the previous year, according to police statistics. In December 2010, the Jewish human rights organization Simon Wiesenthal Center issued a travel advisory concerning Sweden, advising Jews to express extreme caution when visiting the southern parts of the country due to an increase in verbal and physical harassment of Jewish citizens by Muslims in the city of Malmö. In the past recent years, Ivory Coast has seen a resurgence in ethnic tribal hatred and religious intolerance. In addition to the many victims among the various tribes of the northern and southern regions of the country that have perished in the ongoing conflict, white foreigners residing or visiting Ivory Coast have also been subjected to violent attacks. According to a report by Human Rights Watch, the Ivory Coast government is guilty of fanning ethnic hatred for its own political ends. In 2004, the Young Patriots of Abidjan, a strongly nationalist organization, rallied by the state media, plundered possessions of foreign nationals in Abidjan. Calls for violence against whites and non-Ivorians were broadcast on national radio and TV after the Young Patriots seized control of its offices. Rapes, beatings, and murders of persons of European and Lebanese descent followed. Thousands of expatriates and white or ethnic Lebanese Ivorians fled the country. The attacks drew international condemnation. Slavery in Mauritania persists despite its abolition in 1980 and mostly affects the descendants of black Africans abducted into slavery who now live in Mauritania as black Moors or Haratin and who partially still serve the white Moors, 
or by den, as slaves. The practice of slavery in Mauritania is most dominant within the traditional upper class of the Moors. For centuries, the Haratin lower class, mostly poor black Africans living in rural areas, have been considered natural slaves by these Moors. Social attitudes have changed among most urban Moors, but in rural areas, the ancient divide remains. In October 2006, Niger announced that it would deport to Chad the Diffa Arabs, Arabs living in the Diffa region of eastern Niger. Their population numbered about 150,000. While the government was rounding up Arabs in preparation for the deportation, two girls died, reportedly after fleeing government forces, and three women suffered miscarriages. Niger's government eventually suspended their controversial decision to deport the Arabs. Xenophobia in South Africa has been present in both the apartheid and post-apartheid eras. Hostility between the British and Boers exacerbated by the Second Boer War led to rebellion by poor Afrikaners who looted British-owned shops. South Africa also passed numerous acts intended to keep out Indians, such as the Immigrants Regulation Act of 1913, which provided for the exclusion of undesirables, a group of people that included Indians. This effectively halted Indian immigration. The Township Franchise Ordinance of 1924 was intended to deprive Indians of municipal franchise. In 1994 and 1995, gangs of armed youth destroyed the homes of foreign nationals living in Johannesburg, demanding that the police work to repatriate them to their home countries. In 2008, a widely documented spate of xenophobic attacks occurred in Johannesburg. It is estimated that tens of thousands of migrants were displaced, property, businesses and homes were widely looted. The death toll after the attack stood at 56. In 2015, another widely documented series of xenophobic attacks occurred in South Africa, mostly against migrant Zimbabweans. This followed remarks by Zulu King Goodwill's Verlifini Carb Hacker Zulu stating that the migrants should pack their bags and leave. As of the 20th of April 2015, seven people had died and more than 2,000 foreigners had been displaced. In the Sudan, black African captives in the Civil War were often enslaved, and female prisoners were often abused sexually, with their Arab captors claiming that Islamic law grants them permission. According to CBS News, slaves have been sold for 50 US dollars apiece. In September 2000, the US State Department alleged that the Sudanese government's support of slavery and its continued military action which has resulted in numerous deaths are due in part to the victims' religious beliefs. Yok Madat Yok, professor of history at Loyola Marymount University, states that the abduction of women and children of the South is slavery by any definition. The government of Sudan insists that the whole matter is no more than the traditional tribal feuding over resources. Former British colonies in sub-Saharan Africa have many citizens of South Asian descent. They were brought by the British Empire from British India to do clerical work in imperial service. The most prominent case of anti-Indian racism was the ethnic cleansing of the Indian minority in Uganda by strongman dictator and human rights violator Idi Amin. Racial discrimination has occurred against white Zimbabwean communities. The government has forcefully evicted them from their farms and committed ethnic cleansing against them. The Immigration Restriction Act 1901 effectively barred people of non-European descent from immigrating to Australia. There was never any specific policy titled as such, but the term was invented later to encapsulate a collection of policies that were designed to exclude people from Asia and the Pacific Islands from immigrating to Australia. The Menzies and Holt governments effectively dismantled the policies between 1949 and 1966 and the Whitlam government passed laws to ensure that race would be totally disregarded as a component for immigration to Australia in 1973. The 2005 Cronulla riots were a series of race riots and outbreaks of mob violence in Sydney's southern suburb Cronulla which resulted from strained relations between Anglo-Celtic and Lebanese Australians. Travel warnings for Australia were issued by some countries but were later removed. On December 2005, a fight broke out between a group of volunteer surf lifesavers and Lebanese youth. These incidents were considered to be a key factor in a racially motivated confrontation the following weekend. Violence spread to other southern suburbs of Sydney, where more assaults occurred, including two stabbings and attacks on ambulances and police officers. 
On 30 May 2009, Indian students protested against what they claimed were racist attacks, blocking streets in central Melbourne. Thousands of students gathered outside the Royal Melbourne Hospital where one of the victims was admitted. In light of this event, the Australian government started a helpline for Indian students to report such incidents. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Navi Pillay, termed these attacks disturbing and called for Australia to investigate the matters further. On the island of Fiji there is ongoing tension between the large number of Hindu ethnic Indian Indo-Fijians, who are the descendants of contract labourers brought to Fiji from northern India during British colonial rule and the majority local Christian Fijian population who are ethnic Melanesians. Jim 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 Fijian population.